This conference will now be recorded. Good morning. It's now 9 a.m. Today is Saturday, March 20th, 2021. This is the regular virtual meeting for the Grand List, October 1st, 2020. I'm going to call the meeting to order. We are going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, in attendance this morning, we have Mr. Shelby Jackson, Town of Wallingford Assessor. Mr. Carl Bonamico will be a few minutes late. He has a work conflict. Mr. Robert Avery, uh, member of the board, Mr. Tom Vitale, chairman of the board, Ms. Shelley Hemingway, recording secretary, Mr. Kevin Coons, chief appraiser. Item number four, approval of minutes. Uh, we, we do not have any this morning to approve. Number five, the consent agenda. We do not have that yet, I do not believe. Mr. Chairman, if I may, that may be ready by the 24th. Okay, that would be fine. Okay, so we're going to move on to item six, discussion and possible action regarding attached appeals. Um, we are going to start with appeal 2020-17. Joseph and Eileen Della Selva. Concerning property at 81 Washington Street, I am going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. You have placed a market value on the property of $250,000. Uh, please explain your basis for that value. Okay, I did send you one comp with that, and then I have others. Um, nothing has closed in quite some time. Um, the last was 273 at 259, and this is going back. Um, you have 112 Washington Street at 241, 198 at 242, 273 at 259, and then the one I sent you. And then... Uh, Uh, that's what I have for Washington Street that are comparable. Okay, all we have is 112 Washington Street. You have an MLS listing with a closed price of 241,550. Right. Closed on 8-7-2020. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so as for comparable, um, this house is a little bit smaller. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, at this point in time, this this property had a um, market value of two hundred and three eight hundred and fifty seven, and sold significantly higher than the market value the town placed on it. Approximately thirty eight thousand dollars more than the town town it placed on it. What well, you're going back to what 2008? 8 7 2020. It didn't August 7 to 2020, the property closed at 241 550. 81 Washington Street? Which property are you speaking of? The copy you gave me, 112 Washington Street. Okay. So. So from the town's market value of 20. 3857 it sold for 241550 which is $38,000 more than what the town placed a value on it so uh and it has a new assessed value from that that date and that time the new assessed value for that property um 
it's 230,000 when the, the, the new assessed value is 161,300 or a market value of 230,400. And it's still sold for over uh, $11,000 over. So it's a very good real estate market uh, on Washington Street by the looks of, of that comp. Uh, yes, right now that could change. But the snapshot is as of October 1st, 2020. So that's that's what this is based on. Right, well, I have the other comparable. I mean, nothing has sold for over 259 comparable i don't have that information here so I, I can't say it's comparable 273 washington street but you haven't submitted that to me i don't i don't well, have I just it had to send a one i didn't know how many to um send to you you gave us i'm just you gave us that one those are what you know um the numbers have revealed about the the property values um, so you're currently at, you have a new market value or a new appraised value of 197,400, a new market value of 281,900. The town has reviewed the property. Correct, Kevin, and we've... Correct, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ian reviewed some of these and he um, highlighted some sales um, that were used, some comparable sales. Okay. Um, namely, the first one, uh, 170 South Cherry Street, that sold for 300,000. Uh, 139 Hall Avenue, that sold for 239,900. Um, so, based on his review, he's recommended. Um, that the value be changed to 271,300. Based so that's on the total correct. review of condition, what he saw in the neighborhood. So after the reval, the va the market value was 281,9. The town, after uh, doing comparables that have closed, uh, and um, Reduce the overall condition of the property, and 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 per the comparables, they have reduced the market value to two seventy one three hundred. That's our recommendation, Mr. Chairman. I don't know why they're not using comparables on Washington Street and why South Cherry and Hall, but there's plenty of sales on Washington Street. But at what dates were they? Well, I can go back and get you all of them. I have the MLS right here. Well. Well, how many do you want? Well, they have to be within a, a, a close time frame to. Right. Within 12, now. 18 months. Yeah. Uh -huh. So definitely the real estate market has changed, uh, especially for two family homes in Wallingford. That's probably one of the you know, best uh, properties. Uh, to have for sale right now. Well, I'll let you buy it for 281.9. I will, uh, I'll check around and see if I can find a buyer for it. You do that, I'll 281.9, I'll take that. Okay, so the town has reduced it to 270, uh, 271, uh, 900. That's right. So a motion. What does it bring the assessment to? Um, um, I have a calculator. One ninety three thirty. Do I hear a uh, motion, Mr. Avery? Yes, sir. I uh, make a motion to reduce the uh, market value to two hundred and seventy-one thousand three hundred dollars. I think it's I think it's two seventy-one nine. Let me let me just double check that. Uh, two seventy-one three. I think you said two seventy-one three. That is, that is correct. I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you for taking me in early. I have to take care of my mother. <laughs> thank you. I, I I remember those days. Yeah. Thank you very much. Four, still kicking. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have hearing number 2020-021. Edmund, Diane, are you still there? Yes, hi. I'm Ed. Oh, you're up there. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's me up here. Yeah, I sorry. I, and my daughter my daughter is here too. She's she's also uh a, a owner of the property. Okay, let me just let me call this up and Okay, so I'm going to swear both of you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay. I do. This is yeah. hearing number 2020-021. Princess Amy's Palace, LLC, 226 East Street, Wallingford. Yes. The market value you placed on it, 169.2. Okay, um, please tell us about your property. Uh, I did drop off an envelope. I hope you received it with some photographs. Yes. Uh, at the assessor's office. The house needs a tremendous amount of uh, renovations. There aren't even kitchen cabinets. We have shelves to put food and stuff on. So it's not up to current standards. Are you living there, or is this? Yeah, a... yeah absolutely. Okay. We, my wife and I live there. Okay. So let me look through this. So, uh, Mr. Coons, I, I, uh, I, I don't see uh, the recommendation. Uh, was the house inspected? Um, no, there's never been inspection. Okay. I, I'm, it doesn't appear that there, I have a memo. Um, it doesn't look like they attended an informal, oh, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. They did go to the informal hearing process, and as a result, there was no change. Um, uh, Ian's notes, the market value of the subject property is consistent with similar homes in the neighborhood. And his, he also did a, a brief comparable sales analysis, and that supports a value of 203800 which is higher than the appellate's market value or which is higher than what we what the town has valued it at at this point so ian's new uh evaluation is um uh, 203.8 yes based on other similar properties that have sold so he's recommending no change i have those sales if you'd like me to i, I those i i think i see we have uh 147 East Street, 118 Hall Avenue, 23 Maple Avenue, 
26 Ernest, 92 Bull, and 273 Washington. Is that Nobody's ever come out to the house, though, to look at this particular house. Those are different houses. Those aren't, those can't be compared to our house. But during the revaluation, um, let's see, I can look at the field card. There was a no trespassing sign. So we were doing revaluation. We had field, uh, field inspectors out in the field. Uh, this person was there June 1st of 2020, but because of the no trespassing sign, they weren't able to get a close look at the property, let alone see the inside. They also apparently had a, a phone hearing with the revaluation company in July of 2020. Um, that was in lieu of interior inspections. So I don't know if, if either one of the appellants recall speaking to someone at Vision Appraisal to review the information on a property card. I had spoke to the people on the phone and the only thing that we did was to confirm the rooms, the number of rooms and uh, the heating system and the, the basics of the house. Okay, and we thank you for cooperating with that. Um, we also, uh, there's another indication on September 4th of 2020, we sent out data mailers and uh, there was no change. Uh, apparently the information that we sent to you by mail was correct and, and that we did not change anything. As, that was as to the number of rooms and all? Yes, that yeah, was correct. Yeah. Nothing yeah. changed. Okay, good. We, were quick, but we certainly appreciate you cooperating with us with that as well. So. Um, so to answer your question, Mr. Chairman, someone has not seen the inside of it. No one has been inside the house. Unfortunately, sometimes, Mr. Chairman, we have to sort of judge a book by its cover. And we're not able to see the condition of. Did uh, when you were on the phone hearing, did they ask? Was that discussed about a possible? Uh, visit? I I had uh, done, I had told them they're welcome to come at any time, give me a call to make an appointment. And I had also with the packet I sent uh, that I left at the appraiser's office with the photos, I also put in there in uh, in person inspections available at your convenience. Mr. Chairman, I believe that would have been something that would have been recommended during the informal hearing process. Apparently it wasn't. Okay. So we've had an increase like like the majority of the residential properties in town have increased. Um, so prior So prior to the to the new market value of the increase the, the house had a market value of $169,000. Correct. Which, which is what you're claiming the market value still is. So you're saying the house hasn't gone up in value in the last five years. I don't believe so, uh, based on the condition of the house, yes. Okay, so if that stayed the same, how about the condition of the real estate market today, five years later? Um, values values have gone up, so we, yeah, we can't stay um, where it was five years ago. I mean, because because everything has, you know, all the values of the, of residential have gone up uh, as of October first, twenty twenty um it's a very good strong 
real estate market. Prices are up, demand is is up, supply is low, and Wallingford is a prime prime town. So, um, you know, that's just the course of of, of business uh, with valuing property. Uh, about a block away from me, one on the corner of South Cherry and Park just sold for 105, and I believe it's number six Park Street sold for 100, and it was a total renovation that people are doing to it. Well, I you haven't supplied that as a comp, so I don't I don't have that information. Okay. Um, you're 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 telling me that, but I don't have anything to to back that up. Uh, so as the towns, you know, uh, is stating here, um, they feel it's comparable to to market prices. You don't feel it's comparable. I I. If. I mean, we're certainly welcome to have somebody come and look at it if they want. Well, we're in we're in the process now, you know, to to hear the appeals. Um, we're we're not we're not in the process to do the inspections. I mean, we've already been through through that process from last year. I mean, I think we could give, uh, you know, maybe a little more relief. I I would. I would like to make a motion or or a suggestion. Mr. Avery can make the motion that that we re, we can reduce the the market value to one hundred and ninety eight thousand. Mr. Chairman, um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead. Okay, I, we have a, a current market value right now of one eighty seven eight hundred. Yes, that's what I have in writing here. So that would. Okay. Well, what was the two hundred three eight hundred? That was just a uh, based on when uh, Ian ran some comparable sales. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because I don't I don't have Ian's paper with the packet, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm missed. This I missed was. That. Not, oh, forgive me. This was not a recommendation. It was just part of his notes. That says okay. comparable sales support a value of two hundred three thousand. So we're we're recommending that one eighty seven eight hundred is a fair market value. So that's where we're at right now. So he's recommending not to increase it. In other words. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me. Uh, let me Mr. Chairman, I believe that Ian might have emailed this to you um, um, very recently, maybe yesterday. We realized that there was one or two memos that were not included in the packet. Here it is. I do have it. Okay. Two. 226 each street. Okay, current market value 187.8. Okay. Um, okay, ba based on that number, uh, I think that's very appropriate. Um, So there's no way, even though the the assessment time period, as you called it, was done, that somebody could come out to our house and look at it as part of the appeals process. This is Mr. Something. Coons, Mr. Jackson, your opinion Mr. on that? So this is Shelby, Mr. Chairman. I'll I'll chime in. Okay. Hi there. Okay, yeah. So because of the pandemic, you know, we we suspended actual interior inspections. In lieu of that, we conducted the phone uh, interviews, 
you know, to get a good picture of what we were dealing with on, on everyone's property. We're satisfied that we have adequate information to make an accurate market value in this case, and the 187, um, 187 800 is actually lower than what comparable uh, a review of comparable sales would otherwise indicate. So we're recommending no change. And, and I'm in agreement with that. Um, but they only asked the, the room numbers and the heating. They didn't ask yeah. about the interior of the house. We, we can come and inspect your home, and if we find any, uh, you know, any, any reason to change it, we would do that going forward for next year. I don't anticipate that we'd find a change, quite frankly. You know, we're pretty familiar with, with the house from the exterior. We get a good idea of what we're dealing with, and I don't see anything. Uh, I really don't anticipate anything that's going to make a significant difference at all. But we'll, we'll be glad to do that, but it would be for going forward for next year. So as as for this meeting, this appeal, uh, the current market value of 187.8 uh, would be what we're um, recommending the market value be, and and I, I think we're ready to vote on it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion of no change. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And and as per Mr. Jackson. Uh, please get a hold of the assessor's office and uh, set something up. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next appeal would be twenty twenty dash o three five Leslie uh, Kinnick. Hello, yes. Yeah. Okay, just let me find the packet here. Okay, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Okay, this is hearing number 2020-035, Leslie Kinnick, 48 Long Hill Road. You've placed a market value of $191,000 on the property. Um, Town currently has a market value of $305,500. So please go ahead and, and uh, explain to us uh, your uh, methodology of saying 191,000 is the market value. I bought this home in 2018 as a foreclosed property. With that came a lot of scenarios that was uh, unforeseen. Uh, there was no ability as a foreclosure to have an inspection performed. Um, due to that, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into. Um, I had an engineer come on site for a nine foot wall that was poorly constructed due to poor drainage. There was a lot of liability issues on my neighboring property as well as on my own property. Uh, these came with some hefty expenses um, that I had to incur. And meanwhile, this is a primary residence of mine. This is not any investment property of mine. Um, I had to address leaks that were coming into the house from the roof. I had to address from the chimney, poor flashing, uh, having to repoint a lot of the masonry work. Um, I have walls that were falling that require uh, 
drainage to be reperformed and walls to be reconstructed. Um, due to a lot of the conditions of the home with the continuous water coming in, uh, the attic flooded some of the ceiling for the homes, um, which also caused problems with the flooring. Uh, and that all still needs to be repaired. There's a lot of items that um, I focused on to stop the leaking first. And then uh, when I do have the funds, I will try and take care of the others. However, I do not know at this time how that will work. Um, I'm currently trying everything in my power to make that happen. Um, however, with work two situations coming up and arising, I've been on business trips and I really haven't been able to perform a lot of these tasks. Um, I have the dated bathrooms and occasional plumbing issues where I had to bring people in to look at that as well. Um, uh, I had brand new windows put in due to a lot of water coming into the house. I knew that that was something that I needed to focus my attention on. Those new picture windows, I'm taking it up with the company currently. They installed in 2018 and to date, they are still coming out. I have the VP visiting with me on Monday to discuss all of the issues. I also have electrical problems with which I've worked with uh, the town of Wallingford on. Uh, I've met with Mr. Maurizio at Wallingford Electric to go over all of the scenarios. I am currently still waiting for Frontier to perform what they need to because my tower for all of my electric is poor. Um, so currently I'm in a situation where there is a lot on my plate and I've also taken out a pool because of liability issues with this wall. And I've had, I've tried to work with the town assessor that came out from vision appraisal. And to my surprise, I found that nothing that was shown when he came out was documented and my field card was not updated appropriately. In which case they wrote back saying my reassessment was the same as what they were originally trying to assess it at. Mr. Chairman, if I may comment on that briefly, or please, please. Okay. yep. What we discovered after looking at this, um, it was not the revaluation company. The revaluation company apparently uh, did go out and make note that the pool was not um, there any longer. He so he did make that note. I believe there was a clerical oversight on the assessor's office part, and not the revaluation company. We're, we're Obviously, with the revaluation going on, there was a lot of changes and things going on, that, and this was not, honestly an oversight on our part. Uh, but at this point, we have removed the pool assessment. Okay. So, just let, this is Shelby. Let me be clear. <clears throat> so, we've removed the pool going forward, but Kevin, we are recommending that the board adjust the market value on this property uh, to reflect that the pool was not there as of October 1st. So we're recommending uh, a market value of $300,800. Right. right. I, I, I have that memo on that, so. So prior to the re-evaluation, um, the town had a market value of $276,714 on the property. And through the normal appreciation of the real estate market um, in general, specifically in Wallingford, um, you know, the property has been increased like the majority of the properties have, have increased. Um, you know, your estimate of property value of 191,000, I mean, you, you have not provided any comparable uh, closed sales uh, to support uh, 
that number um, for for your house. You know, you've you've explained uh, all the work that you've had to do uh, with the property, but in the end, it really comes down, you know, to the value of the property. Yes, and I understand that. I actually made an error. I was claiming the 199 should have been in the assessed value. So apologies for that. Um, again, this is very new for me, so I've never performed a process such as this. Uh, my main concern was me trying to work with the town and finding that clerical oversight was very upsetting and disconcerting. Correct, and, and uh, you know, uh, the town assessor's office, uh, I know it's very accommodating to people. Uh, you know, they, they will uh, sit down with you and go over it. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, we have the Board of Assessment Appeals here also to uh, uh, do, do the same thing. Um, so ba based upon the, um, your assessed value of 199, you know, that puts the, the property at about a $284,000, um, market value. Now, how did you determine that? Is that what you feel you sell the house for? Yes, I do. So, and usually, usually, you know, the, the town now has it at 300,800. Um, and again, most of the time the town is probably a little on the low side when you when when they put a market value on it compared to uh what's going on in the um real estate market especially the latter half of 2020 and the start of 2021 i mean prices are uh, uh are up there and uh you know, by looking at your house, beautiful brick house, beautiful location. Um, I know there's things that you have struggled with and, and contractors and, and what have you. Um, but, uh, you know, in but the end, it's comparable. Like, if you do comparable, then you compare that. You, you're talking about uh, properties that are in better condition than what I'm currently facing. And what I'm asking is for the board to understand my current situation. As I do understand market values change, and currently with the pandemic and New Yorkers and New Jersey moving into Connecticut, this is what increases the property value. I understand what's happening with the market, and I can appreciate where you're coming from, but what I am doing is asking for your forgiveness for this so I can try to come up with the funds to better help myself right now. I mean, I'm in a situation right now that is very difficult and, yes, and I'm, just, I'm, I'm asking understood. for it too. Correct. I, that is understood and, and, and um, I think we all find ourselves fighting that um, uh, type of situation. Um, Mr. Avery, do you have any comment on this? So I'm, I'm going to do just. Um.
the word. I think based upon, you know, what you have told us and, and um, some of the shortcomings uh, and repairs and issues um, with the property, uh, and, and but not having comparables, you know, I think, I think maybe the market value could be addressed a little bit. Uh, I, I would think 297 uh, would would give a little relief on the uh, the maintenance and repair that you have to do. Mr. Avey, what do you feel? Yeah, I make a motion to uh, reduce the market value to 297. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we have, uh, I'm not sure, uh, we have, please ident identify yourself if you could tell us who you are. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. Hi, this is Can you, feel? Can you identify yourself, please? I'm Linda Carrillo. Okay, Hi, Linda. Hello. I didn't hear which hearing you were calling. Okay, so we're going to go to appeal 2020-002. All right, that would be me. Okay, I, um, I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay, this is hearing number 2020-002, Linda Carrillo, 675 North Elm Street. And I understand that you have worked extensively with the town hall and with uh, Mr. Coons to come up with a um, satisfactory um, change? Um, yes, it appeared that way until I saw this memorandum that was enclosed in my file and that was fraught with inaccuracies. Um, I actually am requesting that letter be removed because um, it, it contains omissions and, like I said, things that aren't accurate. Um, I really don't know how to proceed at this point. Well, I don't, I, first of all, you'll have to explain to me what is wrong within the, uh, the memo. Um, the memo states that, um, that Vision um, Government Solutions said they would change my assessment. They said they would help, and they said that they didn't see why it shouldn't be reduced. And I've also spoken, as the memo says, with Ian and Kevin, and repeatedly I asked if I had to attach the comp to the appeal application. I was told, no, just bring a few of them to the meeting. I even asked as late as Wednesday, the, the um, 17th, if they needed the comp, and I was told again, no. I have sale prices um, for these homes, 12 homes, six which sold in the last two to three months, well under for what they were appraised for, 
and well under what um, even the corrected agreement uh, market value was listed for. So I just feel that um, I've been misled and I haven't really been, um, um, you know, really given honest um, information to facilitate this appeal process. <clears throat> I also submitted an offer that I got from um, a real estate buyer uh, dated March 15th for 188000 because the house needs quite a few repairs and updates. I brought photos into the office, um, as I indicated I would, on Wednesday. So like I said, I'm really unsure as how I should proceed with this. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, please do. Okay. Um, we've... The memo that Mrs. Carrillo is, is speaking about is a, a memo that was started. And it, it's, it was an evolving memo. So at the point where the clerk, the Board of Assistant Appeals clerk, scanned the paperwork, that memo that I wrote, I believe it was on the 15th. I don't have it in front of me. Um, actually, I do. It's Mark. Uh, March, March 16th. That's where I was at at that point. And then the next day, so the long and short of it is that memo is no longer appropriate. But I did. And I, and I have, I have the last memo. Correct. And that's the, the recommendations from March 19th, 2021. And it says the owner has agreed to an assessed value of 164.4. For the 2020 grand list after meeting with me and Shelby Jackson on March 17th in our office, which puts a current market value of 242100 on the property. Are you are you aware of that meeting and, and that information? Yes, I'm aware of that. Yes, I'm aware of that. But what okay. um threw did, me did off you, was did you agree to that? Did you agree to that? Um, at the time, I did, yeah. So what, what has transpired from that date to today? Um, because I was told I didn't need to submit, uh, even on Wednesday, I was told I didn't need to submit the comp. I have sales that went all from November of 2020 to February of 2021. I was told by Mr. Jackson that you didn't even use the last quarter of last year. And um, at that point, my assessment had gone up 7.5%. Yes, it, it was a lo lowered during the meeting Wednesday down to half of that, just about 4%. But um, I just feel that, you know, Vision did a, you know, a poor job of what they do. And um, I've also, I think I've also been failed a little bit by the assessor's office. The market for the past 10 years has been down or flat. And the last quarter of 2020 suddenly doesn't make everything skyrocket because the last 10 years, I didn't have my assessment go down to reflect the market. Okay, so you're now sitting at a 4% increase from your from the 2015 um, reval, correct? Is that, right. is that where you are? Um, yes, that's what I believe it calculated out to be. But okay. that is still far and above the comparable houses that have sold in the last two months. Um, and I was well, told I didn't- First, to, first I of all, 4% increase a 4% increase is, is fairly low as as per other people have that have come through here today and probably some of your neighbors if we if we wanted to go house oh, by house all in that. your neighborhood I've I've done all that. I have like like the memo the one correct thing I have I have 50 or more properties I've compared it to 
and there are some that are less than four, some that are more, but hardly right. anybody stayed the same. Correct. But this has been going on for the past 10 years. You know, even when the market was flat or decreased, I own property in Guilford and my assessments were adjusted twice in the last 10 years to reflect the market value lowered. So oh, that's what I'm saying. I think you need to get a new um, team instead of vision government solutions because they obviously don't have a handle on it. But so it's, it's if not, I can jump not, in, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's not not vision, you know, engineering. I think four percent in today's real estate market in five years is not bad. To be honest with you, in 2020. You know, the market in 2020 was not just the last quarter. It it probably was the second, third, and fourth quarter uh, on the rise. And houses are selling well above the market value that the town has placed on them. And I, um, uh, I would just like to, if I could, I would just like to give you an example. 63 Ridgetop was um appraised at 230 it sold in <clears throat> February of 236 uh, no i have that wrong it was sold for 230 it was appraised for 236.9 um 67 carriage drive was appraised for 240,000 it sold uh it sold for 240 it was appraised for 242.7 Spring, a uh, nine Spring Street, 135 was the sale price in February. It was appraised at 196.1. I have six of these properties that all sold less than the appraised value. So even though you're saying that 4% isn't bad, the houses just aren't recovering that during the sale. Well, first of all, some of those properties and some of those locations do not comp well to North Elm Street in your property. They just don't. And you and right. me uh, and I as the member of the board and Mr. Avery as the member of the board, you're telling us this, but we don't have any of that information. We don't know what the house right. looks like. We don't I, have anything. And I, was, okay. I was told by Kevin Coons I didn't have to attach all this to my application, or you would have the information in front of you. But as but on the other hand, the assessment. You know, Worked extens extensively with you. We came up with an agreed value right. of thirty-four nine hundred. Um, based on all of our conversations, we, you know, we did our due. Certainly, we we went above and beyond our due diligence to try to work with you. Correct. I, yes, I'm and, not. And I have a mem I have a memo here stating that you've agreed to it. All right. There's no need to bring any more to the meeting. No, that's right, because I was misled from the beginning. Had I um well, I, I already discussed that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't I don't know that that anybody purposely has misled you about this. Um and I I believe that a four percent increase on a piece of property that you you did not come in in the 2015 reval for a decrease. Um you accepted that number, 4% on top of that in today's real estate market and five years later is is a very fair, uh, you know, increase. I actually am paying more than that and I live on North uh, Elm Street. So, so between uh, the memo, the work the town has done, I think what the board has heard uh, and looking at the, um, 242,100 market price. I think that's everything is appropriate. And uh, I'd like to hear a motion from the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to keep the market value at $242,100. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. And uh, you'll be sent out uh, new information. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, we're going to move on to hearing number 2020-065. Okay, this is uh, 2020-065, Kathleen Bilkins. Is Kathleen with us? There she is. Hi, this is Kathy. I'm sorry. We're just getting on. I thought our appointment time was 10 o'clock. Well, uh, I saw you on and I figured we uh, <laughs> didn't really see the time. So we're, we're almost there. That's okay. So I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I swear. Okay, so this is concerning 230 Main Street, number one. You've placed a market value of $60,000 on the property. So let me just find this. I have your appeal. Okay. Okay. It's uh <clears throat> Okay, so the town has placed a market value of 114,500 Oh, the the paperwork we have says 99.8. As of what date is that number that you're saying? Hold on, let me make sure I got the. Wait a minute. Could you hold on one, one second? Yes, Carl. Yeah, yeah, we're, okay, all right, okay, all right. Uh, sorry about that, that's board member Monomico. All right, let me, let me get this paperwork correct here, because I, we're, do you have more than one unit here, or? No, just one. 230 Main Street, number one, because <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm looking at. Oh, are you? Oh, uh, you know what? I'm looking. Oh, wait a minute. Well, who's Gagliardi, Mary Gagliardi, and James Ross? That's my brother and sister. We all own it together. Okay. Maybe that's what. Uh... Oh. Is there some comps in the in the pile here? Do you know, Kevin? I did submit some with the appeal. Okay, that's okay. That's why I'm 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 looking at the wrong one here. Okay. So yes, the town has it assessed at ninety nine eight hundred. Um, no market value of ninety nine eight hundred. Correct market value of ninety nine eight hundred. Correct assessed value of sixty nine thousand nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Right. which reflects a 47% increase from the previous valuation uh, on, on October 1st, 2015. So in that five-year period, you're saying the market value and the assessment went up 47%. But we purchased the unit for 59,000 
in December of 2017. And in April of 19 and September of 19, two larger, newer units sold for both 60,000 and 62,000. Okay. And the September 19th sale for 62,000 of the larger unit is only about a year before the assessment. So we'll, we'll say those values are the same for the sale price. It's only a $3,000 difference. So that would mean that that 47% increase happened in a one year period. Because if a market value, if the unit sold for 62,000 in September of 2019, the market value of 99.8 one year later is a 47% increase in one year. Okay, the assessor's office has uh, reviewed this and has made the recommendation to change the market value to 79,000. Based on? Mr. Coons, based on? We, uh, Ian did look at those two sales of 46 and 51 Yellowsville Square that sold in 2019. Um, and, and based on Ian's review, and I know he's worked on other uh, mobile homes during the revaluation process, and, and his recommendation is to change it to 79,000. We'll leave that to the, the board at their discretion. Well, I would still say that if a similar unit, newer unit, a year pre previous to that revaluation date, only sold for 62. I think 79 is a pretty big increase still for a one year period. Agreed. Okay. Um, Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Shelby. Can I jump in? Ah, uh, sure. Okay, so um, I worked <laughs> extensively with uh, um, uh, Yale's the, the, the owner of the park itself because they had appealed several units, and in doing so, we looked at a series of sales that have occurred. Uh, within uh, that park and, and and a couple others. And what we found were there were some sales that were very low and some that were very, a couple that were very high. I call those outliers. So we basically eliminated the outliers and focused on what we felt was, uh, um, you know, the, the actual market. And we came up with a, we determined that there was about a 20% reduction that was um, indicated uh, based on uh, based on those sales. Now the problem we have with these mobile homes, I have to tell you, they are a difficult type of property to um, appraise, and the reason is because the sales are all over the map. And what we find is that the newer double wide uh, mobile homes sell for more, as you would expect. Sure. And then yeah. as as these homes get older. Uh, there's a point in time at which they just dramatically drop in, in, in value based on sales. And, you know, like when they get uh, beyond like 30 years old, the sales of those properties just drop off, you know, very significantly. So at any rate, I'm being long winded here. We, uh, you know, we looked at a lot of these uh, various sales that occur. We found that there is a justifiable reason for this, this type of property uh, of about a 20%. Uh, reduction. That's how we came up with the $79,000. We simply took the $99,000 appraisal beforehand, adjusted it by 20%, and that's consistent with what we did to several other homes within that park. But if if that what was the 99.8 based on? You said that was an appraisal. Based upon a couple, there were a couple of higher sales, and and I think the reval company in in formulating, it, they formulate what we call it a, a, let's call it a formula. It's it's a it's a valuation model 
that they can plug in the information and it generates a value. Uh, in most cases, the model works very well. Uh, in some cases, uh, certain properties like mobile homes, unfortunately, do not lend themselves well to the mass appraisal approach. And we have to, you know, take a closer look and make uh, and make adjustments that we, as appraisers, feel are, are appropriate. And that's that's what we did. Can you tell me what sales were used to uh, come up with the 99.8 figure? We feel the 99.8 is is too high. So uh, we have not submitted sales into the record for this. On this case, we may have done that in a previous hearing. I don't recall exactly. But at any rate, we're uh, agreeing that the $99,000 figure is too high, and we're uh, prepared to recommend a reduction to $79,000. Based on the 20% reduction, but if that 99.8 was based on sales that aren't comparable, I mean, I'll go back to, to what I stated earlier, that a year before this figure was determined, there was a sale for $62,000. So even from 62 to 77, that's, that's still a pretty big increase for a year. Correct, so the 60 and the $62,000 sales, we consider those to be outliers. They were unusually low based on other transactions that we looked at. So, you know, we, we're not we're not focusing on that sale because it's sort of by itself, you know, uh, and it was very low compared to other similar sales. So, uh, as I stated earlier, we saw some sales that were very high, some that were very low, these two were very low, and we eliminated those from our uh, our analysis and we and uh, and, and so we're not we, we don't feel that that $60,000 sale is reflective of the market value. Those are pretty much the only sales I found. I, I'll ask again, what were the units that were sold for 99 and higher that were the high end outliers? I, I don't have that. I don't have that with me today. Mr. Chairman, we, during the informal hearing process, we provide um, uh, a few books and we have all the assessments by owner and we also have a uh, binder with um, all the uh, sales that were used in the analysis. So if you know, if next week, if you're more than welcome, come in and review that list. We can walk you through that. And like okay. Shelby, they're all over the board, probably. So then that would be uh, in the assessor's office. Correct. Yes. You you provided a a compare uh, lot 51. Are you familiar with that? Uh, Particular yeah. unit per se. Just just from the comp sheet, I don't know the unit. Yeah, just, I mean that's one hundred and fourteen thousand five hundred, and and as some are very low, that may be very high. But I, Wait, I'm that, just trying to. I have that as selling for sixty thousand. But four. I'm what's fourteen? Oh, that would be our estimated value for the revaluation. Yeah. I hope those people will put in an appeal too. Then. <laughs> Are you saying that that is a unit that sold for sixty thousand dollars, lot fifty one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, four twenty two twenty nineteen was sold for sixty thousand dollars. Right. Okay. So All one right. year later, a year and a half later, you're saying it should have sold for a hundred fourteen? Well, it's actually yeah, a year and a half later. Seems well, pretty steep increase. Again, it, it goes back to uh, whether it's mobile home or mansion. Uh, the real estate market has gone up dramatically, and uh, you know. Well, this was 2019. Was prior to that. 2020. Well, no. Okay, we're in. So, uh, so, what would it have sold for in 2020? All right, because we're basing what we're doing here on on October 1st, 2020. Mm-hmm. So, uh, again. I don't think it, it, it probably would have done better than 60, especially if it was had a market value of 114. Well, there's another unit in the park, number 44, that sold for 60,000 in October of 2020. It was somewhat smaller than these. It's only 784 square feet, but it's still 60,000. 
Um, What's your assessed value for that unit or your market value on this revaluation for that unit? So which, the only other one I have in front of me is, is 48, the one, the one you supplied. Mm, I gave 51 and 46, I think. Oh yeah, okay, 46, I can't. Yeah, all right, 46, correct. <clears throat> so it was sold um, in September of 2019 for 62,000. Right. And again, it had a, it had an uh, yeah, it had an, a, a market value of one hundred four thousand seven hundred. Can you look at the market value for number forty four in your October twenty revaluation? We don't have that information available I, I, yeah. because of the we do this remotely. What was the uh, Value for 46 that you said? I'm sorry. 104. Um, 104.7. And it sold for 62 a year earlier. Correct. So if you if you jump from September of 2019 to September of 2020, um, I think you find the price would be be higher. I'm not saying it's going yeah, to be well. 104, but it would be higher than the 62. Well, even the, I mean, the, the units that are for sale right now aren't going that high, but I, I would be very interested in seeing the market value you've assessed, or you, or you I don't want to say you have assessed, the market value you've assigned to number 44, because that sold in October of 20 for $60,000. So. Okay. So how hold on one second so what the the what is the address then 44 yalesville square yes <clears throat> so if i come into the assessor's office next week and look up the market value you've assigned for that, and it's considerably higher than the 60,000 that it actually sold for, what do I do at that point? Do I, I don't really want to accept your value of, I'm sorry, I can't see where I wrote it down. Was it 79 that you've reduced the market value to for ours? Um, correct, that's what, uh... That's what we've reduced it to, unless the board has um, another, you know, appealing or, or motion uh, concerning it. Again, okay. these, like Mr. Jackson said, they're uh, um, you you see some of the values placed on them, and, and the sale prices uh, are either higher, or lower, or all over the place. They're just uh, Hard to compare. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to look at the uh, market value you've assigned to number 44, and if it's much higher than the the 60,000 that it sold for, what do I do next? Is there another level of appeal that I can go to for this? Mr. Coons or Mr. Jackson, can you address that? You would. Uh, um, in the letter you received, uh, or in the letter that you will receive after this meeting. Um, there will be an explanation on what the next level to appeal is. So it would be with Superior Court. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, at, at, you know, we've reviewed this um, in understanding, you know, that uh, uh, she's unsure of, of market values of, of neighboring uh, units. Uh, we have to either table it and you can do whatever you want or we will vote on it and you can do whatever you want also. So, But I, I think the board may have a recommendation moving forward. I see Mr. Bonamico is talking, but I don't hear anything. No good.
You're not, you're not muted. Um, there you are. You're not there. All right, I'm going to make I'm going to make a recommendation, uh, and I believe Mr. Bonamico, uh, I think that's what he was trying trying to do. But I'm going to make a motion to reduce the market value to seventy five thousand dollars. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think Mr. Bonamico heard that, but uh, just can't respond. Okay. Okay, um, thank you for that. I will check in with the office on probably Monday to see what the market value is assigned to number 44 and decide if we wanna move forward with anything at that point. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Bonamico, do you do you hear us? Okay, hold on a minute. Like we can't hear you, but can you hear us? Okay, so. Uh, we'll continue we'll continue the meetings, and when we get to the end of one, I'll call you. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. So I uh, we're going to go to hearing number twenty twenty dash o o three one. And this is Michael Scarpa. I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. I do. Okay. So you have property at 222 North Cherry Street. Uh, you've placed a market value. I have a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, market value. You placed the market value of two hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars. Chairman, a motion to reduce. You don't hear me. I hear you now. I can hear. I hear someone else. Carl, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. 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 Hey, Mr. Scarpa. Um, I make a motion to reduce the market value. You. Uh, Sorry, we're I get I have some static no. now. <laughs> Not sure what's going on now. I can hear you now. Okay. So please please continue us and tell us about your appeal. Yes, hi, good morning. Can you and, hear me? Uh, thank you all. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> Just keep going. I'm I'm not sure what okay. that is. All right. Um, good morning, all, and thank you for your time this morning. Um, I'd like to give you a quick background on this property. I purchased it back in 2017 for $113,000. Uh, at the time, it was appraised for 241. dollars It was on the market for 294 days and, and was not moving. Um, I did do a renovation. I guess I'd like to address, I saw the um, appraiser's response, I guess. Um, in the, the minutes for this meeting. Um, the renovation I did was out of necessity. The uh, property was not inhabitable uh, upon my purchase of it. So um, I believe that was completed in 2019. Hello? And Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Keep going. Just keep going. Continue. Uh, please. Yeah, we can't hear me. 
All right. Um, okay. Sorry. So I was saying that. Um, yeah, the the renovation I believe was completed in 2019, um, whereupon a new appraised value of $290,000 was placed on the property. Um, at the time, I thought that property valuation was high. I had spoken to the appraiser about uh, going through this process at that point, and uh, the topic of this revaluation arose. So uh, I just decided that it was worthwhile to wait for the revaluation, as I thought that it would be readjusted to market value. Uh, um, apparently, it was readjusted higher even than that. Um, I know I noticed there was a mention that there were door tags left on the property. Um, I do not recall seeing those. Um, the house was unoccupied for a period of over one year, and then it was occupied by tenants. Uh, it took a long time to fill the units due to the train station. So even, I think, it took about six months to, to get renters after the renovation was completed. Um, so I submitted, I'm not sure if you guys have had a chance to review, but um, myself and my real estate broker completed a um, somewhat of an appraisal of three other comps that sold in the downtown area between March 1st and October 1st of 2020. And I also submitted a second report of home valuations on the block of North Cherry Street and you can see my subject property is about $85,000 higher than the next highest uh, valued house on the street. Um, and if we look at the comps quickly, I had uh, three comps of 90 Meadow Street, 103 Meadow Street, and 220 South Whittlesey Avenue. There were a total of nine uh, sale transactions that took place in the six month period I just mentioned. And uh, I believe three or four of them were in Yalesville. Um, a couple of them were significantly smaller and a few of them were out of the center of town. So the three comps that I came up with, uh, obviously the Meadow Street comps are right across the railroad tracks and a block back from Route 5. Uh, South Whittlesea is a bit of a, a different neighborhood, so uh, we put the most weight on the two Meadow Street properties. Um, you can see on the spreadsheet I made that um, the appraised value on these Meadow Street properties is 263 and 317. Um, 103 Meadow had a very high uh, appraised value on the garage. I believe it was. $24,000. So I backed the garage out of the appraisal. Um, so the second line shows the appraisal without the garage, 263, 293, and mine is 319. Um, some of the items on these Meadow Street properties were of higher quality than mine. Um, they have vinyl siding versus uh, I have aluminum and Interior has hardwood flooring versus my house has carpet. Um, one of them had an extra half bath. The 220 South Whittlesea had a third bath. Um, all their kitchen styles were average, but you can see in the photos attached that they're pretty much comparable to your standard uh, rental property. Um, the bathroom style average, same thing. Um, and then I'd also like to mention that my driveway is shared. Um, my basement floor is dirt and brick versus at least 103 Meadow. Uh, I was able to see in the sale photos that that has concrete floor. Um, the neighborhood, I would argue, is slightly better in Meadow Street. Um, the train station has been a very big sticking point. Uh, with renting my property due to the train horns that go off every 40 minutes or so. Um, I think like 4.30 or 5 in the morning till probably 9 o'clock at night. Um, so 
for those reasons, I believe that the appraised value is is very high. It seems like um, the values placed um, they all seem to go up about uh, seven, anywhere from seven to fifteen percent over the 2019 number. So um, I just believe that this is kind of built on itself. The the values just got a little out of control, and they just continued to build. Um, you know, it went from 241 in 17 to 246 to 290, and then to 330, which I think was adjusted down to 325.7. So uh, those are the comments I have. You can see I attached a photo of the bathroom. One of the bathrooms wasn't updated. And um, my renovation was done with, you know, it's it's a rental property, so the renovation was done with value um, as the primary objective. Uh, nothing was done of of really high quality finish or anything. Like I said, there's panels on the wall, some sheetrock, carpet throughout the house. It's all, you know fairly it was a renovation done to to make the house inhabitable it wasn't a high-end you know crown molding throughout and and whatnot with with marble floors so uh, hopefully the data i presented was clear enough to see um i guess the last thing i'd like to mention is the neighboring property there's a three family next door to me um, the house is also larger um, by about 300 square feet, and somehow the uh, appraised value for 2020 on that house is 223. Um, I looked up all this data through the vision appraisal, so I I ran all these comps through vision appraisal to see what the new appraised values were. I have the sale values all clearly defined, so. Um, I'm not sure how the 330 valuation was arrived at, but um, it just seems very out of line with every sale that's gone through in the six months prior to October 1st and every house on the street. Have, have you uh, requested or attended an informal hearing with Vision in the assessor's office with this information or no? Um, we did an over the phone. I submitted some information to them. They didn't, um, it was more of like, uh, they asked questions. I provided answers and I, I thought that would have been enough to adjust it by more than $3,000. But I didn't, I didn't think that. So, I had so from 2017 all this. till, till, um, 2020, you've done these renovations. When, when were the bulk of the renovations done? They were all done at once, and they were done in 20, they were completed in 2019. So the you could see the large valuation jump between 2018 and 19. Um, and that's when I guess that took effect. But even you could see the 2017 was even high since I had purchased it in 17 for 113. So I think what happened was these things obviously the the renovations improved the value of the property but i think it was just added on to a already high valuation okay so i i've looked through this and i've looked through these comps and and um um you the house next door and, and this is a, uh, to mr coons uh the house next door is a three-family house and uh the uh, appraised value on that is significantly lower than this house. Um, comparison in condition? I mean, is there? I think that would be an issue. I'm not sure if, if Shelby's there, but he might have reviewed this memo with Ian prior to this meeting. Um, I don't know if, if he would like to comment, but if Shelby doesn't, I do have a couple questions, if I may. Please, yeah. That like you know, he he has done a good job at providing you know, the information in the cops, and and I and I focused, you know, on the one next door too. That uh, either the one next door is 
significantly, you know, low. Yeah. Um, so based on what I heard from the appellant is that, you know, it, it's my feeling that there an adjustment would be warranted. It's just a matter of how much. And I don't know if, if Shelby wants to. Um, so, yeah, this is Shelby. You know, we've, we've coded this property for a major renovation. That's what's driving the higher valuation. We're, yeah. We haven't been able to get inside. We've attempted to by leaving those door tags. Um, and so I don't know. Um, I, I I don't know. Maybe the, the, the Mr. Scarper could tell us, has he responded to those notes? Have we, you know, have we been able to get out there? Or are we able to get out there and take a look? Um, I mentioned earlier, I did not recall receiving notes uh the property was vacant for an extended period of time so i'm not sure if that's when they were left um but it was probably six months plus the property was just vacant and I, I hardly ever went there um before renters even showed up so um so i, I mean it's difficult here. now as there are renters in the the units okay. and with everything going on i haven't even been in there Okay, all right. So I show here, uh, as part of our record, on August 19th of 2020, we had an appointment to go view the property, but nobody showed up for the appointment. So we're, we're basing it on an estimate, and our estimate is that there was a major renovation done to the property on the interior. So, so. Uh, I don't recall setting an appointment. I do recall I came in to see I'm not sure who I spoke with in the office. And uh, we had considered doing this process for 2019. And then I realized that the 2020 reval was coming and uh, I was traveling a lot for work during that and the 2019 period when we were trying to schedule this. So I figured it was the best use of time to just wait till 2020. Um, and I figured the revaluation would just adjust things back to normal. I didn't want to spend a lot of time uh, arguing a, an appraisal um, that was just going to reset the following year. Right. So I think I've stated, you know, the, the value is, is uh, being driven mostly by the condition factor uh, and the fact that we're considering it a major renovation to the interior. So. That's that's what we're basing it on. If that's not accurate, then the board can act accordingly. Yeah, I mean, I would argue it probably you could consider it a major renovation, but it was a a major renovation from a hundred and thirteen dollar, one hundred and thirteen thousand, uh, you know, purchase. It wasn't a major renovation from you know a market value of of an average house. But he, but he has a major increase from 2018 to 2019 of $44,000 in his in market value or $30,000 in uh, assessed value. Is is that the, yeah, and that, is that the renovation value then in, in that one year after, after building permit, after... Uh, no, it's not the complete renovation. We were increasing the value in stages as we were estimating, uh, you know, the percentage of completion. Um, so the the final one, the final value came in 2020, where we considered the, all of the renovations to be complete at that point. I believe this was uh, the permits and everything were closed out in 18. I would have to. Uh, I'm trying to think of where I could find when those were done, but um, the building department and everything went through and signed off. I think I had, hold on, I could find when I had my first renters move in, but um, that renovation was done well before and the um, town signed off on all of that. You have to uh, well before 19. Four, eight, four, 18, 19. Yeah, so the renovations were completed. I think it, it looks like it was the fall of 19. 
the renters didn't move in until the middle of 19, but everything was done. I think everything was signed off on, I would say late summer, early fall of 19 with the town. Would you happen to know maybe a ballpark estimate of, of what was of your cost, the improvements, the total cost? Um, I would, it's hard to say, uh, cause I've, I've done a few different projects. Um, I think the costs were probably somewhere in the hundred, maybe 75 to 150. Uh, sorry, 50 to, to 100, I would probably say. I mean, it was the the major costs, obviously, were the labor, um, but the finished materials, I mean, you know, the lumber, electrical work, and everything was just to, to make the place inhabitable again, as it was vacant, I think, for about five years prior. Was Was this a gut renovation? Yeah. Well, pretty much. It was half, I guess, half. Gut. It wasn't. It wasn't a full gut. I mean, basically, we're arguing the, the market value, and I think the renovation was necessary to to even make the property marketable. But uh, it's not. I wouldn't say it's any more marketable now than any other. Uh, Two family property that we have to comp it to, especially due to the challenges I've had with the train station and everything. I mean, I've had more people turn away from the property due to the train station than than I ever imagined would happen. Okay, well, there's a couple of things here. The fact that that we've never gone in and and done an actual inspection. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, at 10-1-2020, uh, at the time of, of the green list, uh, real estate market was uh, and remains strong. And, uh, you know, you you uh, did, a, did a major re renovation with gutting it, which, uh, which is a sign that it's probably fairly good inside. Um, you know, the town's trying to estimate it. Uh, you've done a good job of giving us comps. So I think the board, you know, we, we realize that and um, maybe, you know, uh, we can give a little more relief um, based upon uh, that. So do I hear something from the board members possibly? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to reduce the market value to $315,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we have... Um, so we're either going to do hearing 2020-039, or that is the last one. Is caller number five, Jonathan Morasuti? Caller number five. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we yes, can is hear you. This, is this Jonathan? Yes, sir. How are you? I am well. So this is hearing number 2020-039. Yes. Okay. And so I'm going to swear you in. I hereby solemnly swear that the testimony I'm about to give is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. So hearing number 2020-039, Jonathan Morasuti, 28 Franklin Street, you have placed the market value at $100,000. Please uh, go ahead and, and explain to us how you determine that value. Yeah, so I, I bought the property 
um, what was it, probably 2019, almost two years ago, uh, maybe a year and nine months ago, um, for 140000 At that time, um, I'm not sure if it was livable. I think it, it's a two-family property. I think the, maybe the first or the second floor was livable. One of the um, <clears throat> one of the um, the heating units didn't work. Uh, the pipes were burst for both floors, actually, in multiple areas, uh, both the domestic hot water and um, you know the um, the heating loop. Um, so then I, I had the property gutted uh, completely down to the studs. Um, all the electrical was removed. All the plumbing was removed. Um, I started renovations. Things got things got a little uh, you know tricky with COVID. Um, so you know currently the house has uh, new electrical. Um, <laughs> you know I had my I had my rough inspection passed and it has new plumbing. My rough inspection was passed. Um, but aside from that, you know, there's no, you know, it's still down to the studs. There's not a fixture in the place. There's, um, you know, no finished materials, no flooring. Um, a lot of the floor was replaced with, with plywood uh, to even out, you know, where the hardwood had ended. Um, there's a few windows that aren't, um, that are kind of just hanging because they're old windows and the old uh, window stop is taken out. So those are kind of just flapping. There's a hole in the roof where the chimney used to be that there's really just a piece of, um, you know, tarp time kind of tacked up there. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I thought that the, you know, the 140 was something that, you know, might be, might be, um, kind of uh, just kind of make have and kind of, you know, you could go in and maybe just pass those pipes to the point where it is now, um, where it's completely un, un, unlivable. And, uh, you know, I've gotten quotes to finish the rest of it for anywhere from, um, you know, 110 to 155,000. Um, so I figured the, the market value, just based off of what I've been seeing as properties sold, you know, two families are, are probably in the, you know, mid to high 200s range. I figured, you know, the price um, of the renovation to get it there plus, you know, the 100,000 would give you, you know, a market valuation that was comparable. Okay, so has any, all right. So we have to, you know, establish, you know, what the house is going to be worth when it's finished. And, and then we have to establish, you know, how, long are you in the process how long are, you know are you in the process yeah and i and i think that's i'm sorry no go ahead no go ahead i <clears throat> i was just going to address the the you know the issue of how, how how long i'll be in the process and that's kind of you know that's been the thing you know i bought the house two years ago um you know it, it sat for a little while i was going through a lot of um you know, um, you know, getting contractors lined up and whatnot um, and going through the, you know, the building department. And then, you know, now it's like, you know, money, money is, is the issue. And like I said, I'm, I'm still, uh, uh, you know, 110 to 155 away from, from finishing it. And that's, and that's if I hired, if I hired somebody out, which I certainly don't have the money to do that. So, I mean, right now, you know, I mean, to be honest, I'm going there on weekends and whatnot, but there, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't speak to the to, to how long it would take me to finish it. So that's 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 a complete unknown. I, I you know I wish I had a I wish I had a, a better a better um you know a better way to address that than that. But okay, so as it sits right now, if we're we're talking about sixty five percent, um, I think it I think it just has to do with the with the real with being realistic about you know the valuation like if somebody was going to purchase it what would they be able to purchase it for you know and I think you have to take into account the the cost that would that it would take to get it to anything close to to comparable you know and 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 those costs you know it has this old asbestos side, siding which I would say is in is in pretty good shape a couple of the tiles are cracked 
but it's it's overall in good shape. Um, you know, there's peeling paint, so that 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 cost does not include, you know, um, redoing the siding or the roofing. It just includes patching the roof and uh, you know painting the siding. So we're not talking about you know the the end result being anything that's that's out of norm for the neighborhood. So nobody has come and uh or, or something was scheduled and and it didn't no happen. nothing yeah nothing nothing was ever scheduled um i never heard anything from the point i bought the property till maybe six months ago when <clears throat> that uh vision vision something or other that company was doing the appraisals um and we had spoken and and she said oh you know it's two bedroom three bath and i was like well you know it's it's not it's it's nothing right now everything's got to the studs and she had said that there would there would be a time to 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 revisit it, um, and I, I think I, I kind of just went through the process. I got a couple, I got another phone call maybe, and a couple letters, kind of all explaining the same thing. Um, but nobody's came to see the property or, or requested to do so. Okay, because I don't think the town has a uh, possibly a good understanding of completion is that or no that yeah I, I correct are we are we estimating at 65 percent or nobody's yes, been there right in other words we've estimated the value of that property based on its uh condition that the appellant stated at 207 300 that recognizes that it's an incomplete uh building I think the depreciation, or we may have been a little bit aggressive, um, so I can see that there would be maybe a, a slight reduction warranted. But keep in mind that we would revisit this next year or October first, yeah. 2021, and that would that assessment will potentially change based on the progress. Because the because the 207 at 65 percent puts the the value of the house up there pretty good. Um, it does. I agree. Yeah. It, uh... I, I, if if I may, uh, I I just saw like on the MLS right now. There's a two family on on Ward Street um, that's listed for 124, and there's a there's a two family on South Cherry that's listed for 199. So I, I mean, I feel like 207 is even a, a, a far cry from 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 kind of reality. Yeah, but you're right. And, and I think, and I think, I, I think that coming to see the property would be, you know, I, I, you know, I would, I would push for that because I think that'll give a, a true representation of what, what you're really looking at. Well, I think, I think we, as a board, can look at where you are right now, but your, your final, you know, uh, value is going to be when you're finished. I mean, this is still yeah, absolutely the process. So, I, I think the board. Um, um you know the i think the board has seen and and heard and and uh you know uh um you know can do something but again you, this is just going to be you know a process that when you get to the final stage they're going to lock in a number so yeah, yeah, and I think that you know that would be a, a, be a better time to do so. You know, for both for both for both of us, really, right? I mean, you know, for uh, the town we have higher valuation, and you know, it, ma it makes more sense to get a realistic view uh, for my standpoint. Right. But in in the meantime, we got to limp along together to get this you know process. Yeah, and and what would that look like? Is that like a a, a postponement or? Uh, me no, we're, we're, you guys gonna, we're probably going to take the number and we're going to reduce it and and because you have to be uh in the system um at, at a number so so do i hear a, a recommendation from the board mr chairman and make a recommendation to reduce the market value to one hundred ninety five thousand dollars. second all in favor aye, aye. so you know, stick with it, and and as it goes along, the, the the assessor will be there to you know work with you on on putting a value on it. 
wouldn't there be a way for 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 someone to come look at it? Because even that, like I said, I mean, to I couldn't imagine selling that house for one hundred ninety five thousand or even close to it. I mean, there, there's there's nothing in it. I mean, what would you do with a house at, at one hundred ninety five thousand when it needs, you know, another another hundred and fifty to do to to get you know eleven twelve hundred dollars of rent a month. You know, from a just like a, yeah. you know, who's going to buy that house at that at that at that price? You know. Well, we we have to establish something, and you know, we we you know brought it down, uh, projecting what it's going to be worth out in the future. So, uh, a, a, again, as you move along, get the town in there to take a look at it, and and uh, and work with them on on you know determining what it's worth. So. Okay, we have to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kevin, let me just ask you on 2020-037, um, that's the Pilgrim Harbor one. Is that still on or that's the one that we had? Uh, you had the appraisal. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have the appeal and I have the appraisal. I don't see that they've dialed in yet. Mr. Chairman, I do have their telephone number. If that helps, I can give them a ring. Yeah, maybe maybe you should give him a ring because um, Hey Tom. Yes. I did I did a couple closings recently around Metal Street. One was on Metal Street today and the last 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 week. And those numbers are going up regardless of the train station or what have you. Uh and the appraisals, even the appraisals, which are typically conservative, are the numbers are going up. Correct. So uh it's kind of hard to make yeah. the case about the train and some what some of the things are going on. These numbers are are it, it like you said the market is 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 really strong yeah i yeah I, you know i took a ride around last night yesterday afternoon in um um i i you know i thought the advantage was being at the train station where it was i mean it's walk across the street and you're there i i understand the the uh the other issues but uh uh yeah, all all the two families in in that area are uh, should be strong. Yeah, but you're like you pointed out, there are people willing to pay up to be near the train station. Well, the earlier one, uh, yeah, uh, they provided a comp that the people paid thirty eight thousand over the town's market value for a two family on on uh, um not Meadow, but. Uh, what street was that? Uh, yeah, Washington Street. Yeah, they they paid uh, they paid uh, thirty eight thousand over uh, the town's market value. So, wow. Oh. Well,
Shelby. Uh, yes, Tom. So if this uh, appeal uh, do not show up, can we vote to make the change to the market value based upon the memorandum? Technically, no. No, uh, without hearing them? Right, under Connecticut law section 12-113, states that the board cannot reduce the value of an, unless a person appears before the board or their agent or their authorized agent um so and then of course because of the pandemic the physical presence appearance has been waived in lieu of a virtual meeting so they have to at least show up to the virtual meeting okay kevin did you call Yes, I did. And I just spoke with the owner. Um, she had two issues. We had a conflict. She um, just actually had her closing two days ago. So she sold her unit for 164000 So she will not be obviously attending the meeting. So she no, she no longer owns the unit. Yes, correct. Okay. So no change. She doesn't want to, sh she doesn't want to show. Okay. Correct. All right. Do I hear a motion? Okay. Now wait a minute. I uh, make a motion. Just, no change. Hold on, Carl. This is for. Um, let me let me just make a note of which one this which is. Which one? Um, the one that the woman is. Okay. Okay. So this is hearing number twenty twenty dash zero three seven. Enid L. Stanley and Keith Santora. And this is 296 Pilgrim Harbor. Okay. Now do I hear a motion? Make a motion to no change. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I think that concludes meeting we covered everybody do i hear another motion uh, make a motion mr chairman to adjourn the meeting second all in favor aye, aye. okay monday night right correct so, have a nice night. Night. Good weekend thank you thank you